everyone. Today we are doing a grocery budget audit with Janet, who feeds her family for $1 a meal. I was very impressed, but I also saw some areas that she can save, and she asked us to um, look at her grocery bill. Sorry, guys, we're having tech issues, so if things go a little wiggy, please be patient. Um, she asked us to look at her grocery bill and see if she can cut anywhere else, so we are going to take a look at that. But first, I wanted to let you guys know that our Dining on a Dime cookbooks are on sale right now for Labor Day, 35% off. All of our cookbooks are volume one and two are the red and the blue, and they go together, but can be used separately, individual recipes. And our gluten-free, dairy-free edition is the green one. And for all of our friends who like eBooks or who live outside of the United States, they are also 35% off. And Janet is going to be getting a $100 gift certificate to our store as a thank you for being on the show for us. And if you would like to do a grocery audit, it is in the description below. So please go check that out. And we are happy to see if you will be a fit. All right. Here we go. We're going to start with Janet's video and see how we can help her. Hi, I'm Janet and I live in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm a mom of three daughters and a stay-at-home mom and a homeschool mom. So I cook a lot and my kids eat a lot at home all the time. So I'll take you around and show you my pantry, show you what I have now, and hopefully you can give me some tips on how I can help streamline my life, make it easier um, as far as preparing ahead, having things on hand, maybe a little bit more focused on like freezer meals, making my life easier while still um, cooking um, and eating at home and, um, being economical. So here we go. All right. Welcome Janet. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, I was super excited. You were so thorough. I, I just was so happy to see all your footage because I'm like, man, you hit it all. So are there any, what's your number one question that you would or problem that you would like to solve with grocery bill? With the grocery bill, um, I feel like I've been doing meal prepping um, as far as meal planning, but for whatever reason, um, I have, I, it just seems like I collect ingredients and I cook from scratch. So if I'm sick or something's going on, we just have ingredients at the house. And unless I have prepared meals ahead of time that just can be reheated, um, we don't really have, uh, I don't feel like I'm prepared enough in that way as far as planning ahead and making freezer meals or things that be, can be cooked quickly um, because it just seems like I just continuously buy um, uh, just uh, what are they called? Like ingredients um, okay. instead of packaged yeah, meals okay. because I had a lot of like, I wasn't, sometimes we buy like frozen pizza. Well, we do buy frozen pizzas every week um, for like the easy meal where I get a night off, which is great. But um, as far as other like store-bought pre-made meals, we'll have a few things like chicken nuggets or something like that. But every day I'm just cooking again and again and again, and it gets exhausting. And then if there's a hiccup, like I get sick or when the kids get sick or something happens, like last week we had a pipe burst in our front yard oh, wow. um, and the water was turned off, but um, that was fun. But I felt like we were prepared because we had water from the hurricane. And so everybody was able to like, you know, drink water and wash your hands and everything when the water is turned off for a few hours. But when things like that happen that are unexpected, I wish I was, I wish I had like freezer meals, <laughs> like 
lined in the freezer. Um, but for whatever reason, they always get eaten really quickly and I'm not good at replenishing them and coming up with a system um, to do that continuously over and over all the time and have it just be a rhythm. It's more of like the occasional, oh, I thought ahead like a couple of weeks ago and then, oh, we needed this meal. Yeah. Whereas I, I think I'm at the point of like how old my kids are and how busy our lives are getting and how much food they're eating that I just need to have those all the time. Okay. And I don't remember if you said in your intro, what are the ages of your kids? 11, eight and five. Okay. All right. Let's get into your pantry. I've got some ideas for you and let's see what ingredients you have because you have a lot of really good ingredients. So I was, I was really impressed. I have to say. So, okay. Let's, okay. And you'll be able to watch this later also. Okay. All right. So let's guys, if you love this, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And here we go. Here is my pantry in my kitchen in Charleston. We do not have very much uh, storage space. We don't have basements because of flooding issues. So we're limited to, um, you know, places to put extra amounts of food. Um, but we do what we can and I tried to make it pretty <laughs> by putting everything in buckets from the Dollar Tree. Um, and it helps, it helps, but. Um... Okay, let's talk about these pretty buckets. <laughs> so I noticed with your pantry, do you have a problem finding the ingredients that you do have when you go to cook? No, but everyone else in my house does because I'm the okay. only one who knows where everything is. And I need to be better at labeling things or having like items together because I'll grab one thing from here, one thing from there, one thing from there. And because I put it there, I know where it is. But if someone moves it, now I can't find it. And yeah. okay. no one else can either. Yeah. And your kids are starting to get old enough where they're going to be in the pantry getting, you know, stuff for themselves and stuff like that. So even though it's pretty, right. <laughs> what I would do is um, get a thick shelf liner. You can either buy the shelf liners for those wire shelves or Dollar Tree, not Dollar, uh, well, some Dollar Trees probably do, but um, Dollar General, Walmart, those kinds of places have floor tiles, peel and stick floor tiles. Mm -hmm. I've seen and they were, the, yeah, they're the same one foot width. As those shelves okay if those are 12 inch shelves which i think they maybe are um and what i would do is line your out of the buckets and line them up with like items together first of all you're going to have a lot more room in your pantry because those buckets because they are um yeah upside down pyramid whatever that's called um you're actually losing a lot of storage space that's true. So I would only put in buckets and I would get rid of the tall buckets where you can't see into them. Okay. And I would get um, clear buckets that you can see which, let's see, I'm trying to say this, or think of which foods. Jello, like Jello mixes, um, your seasoning mixes, your rice aroni type things, those could go into buckets. But everything else, like all your vinegars, which you're going to show later, but all of those, I would have them out of the bucket so you guys can find them easy. Now, the other exception would be if you don't have a baking cabinet, uh, do you have a space where you can put a baking cabinet like above a countertop somewhere? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I would have to think about it. You mean like a, like a wire rack or something? No, well like so do you have one cabinet in your kitchen that you could put all of your baking supplies like your pot like your baking powder your brown sugar your uh baking soda all those types of things salt 
Do you have like one section? I, I of have a spice it? cabinet. Yes. Um, where there's three <laughs> shelves. I have the first shelf is savory um, mm -hmm. spices. The second shelf are um, like the vanillas and the mm -hmm. sweet things like nutmeg and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the top shelf are, is very small. So I put little tiny things. Most Mostly it's just storage of stuff I probably just could get rid of. Um, okay. But like tiny things go on the top shelf. Mm -hmm. But I do have a lot of the space taken up by bowls and and like the stackable stainless steel bowls like all the mixing bowls and things okay so what i i should have had you show me i didn't even think about it as i was going through this and um by the way guys gianna just found out this morning she was doing this so thank you very much <laughs> We had an issue and I asked her if she could get on because she was the next one on list. And so thank you very much. So I didn't get more enough pictures for this kind of thing, which I normally would have. But what I'm wondering is if you could put all your um, baking powder, your salt, your baking cocoa all in one cabinet next to your mixing bowls. Yes. And then put all of your savory spices next to your oven, which is where you usually, or your stovetop, where you um, usually use those most of the time. Mm -hmm. And then you're not having to drag your baking stuff from your pantry over. You can just right. open the cabinet door, set, use it, set it straight back up, and you're not doing a double process. So that will help with some of the baking to make it quicker and easier. That's so true. So that you're not just hauling stuff back and forth. Now, if you can't make a cabinet into that, then what I would do is take one bucket and make it into a baking bucket. Okay. Your cinnamon, your allspice, your, your salt, your baking powder, baking soda, all of those would go in that bucket. And then you just drag the whole thing over and that'll help make your baking a lot quicker. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a great idea. I can just... Switch it for the mixing bowls and then mm -hmm. put the flour and sugar over by the other yeah. spices and things. Yeah, yeah, that would work. Okay. All right. Let's look at the rest of it here. I have um, tried to shop sales and um, stock up on things while they're on sale, very inexpensive. Um, but... Um, yeah, we're just limited on space and um, things like that. But here's what I have m that I use most of the time. And I have a lot of pasta. I have a lot of rice. My kids love to snack. I don't know if that's just a kid thing. Um, but they eat snacks all the time. I try and buy some things in bulk like I have. A big, I think it's a 25 pound bag of sugar. And I have extra onions and garlic. I try and buy like the bigger bags of things. I have a couple bags of onions uh, and potatoes and things. Extra olive oil. Um, that I buy at like the chef store um, so that number one, I'm not running out to buy it as often. Okay, I saw those Capri Suns. <laughs> okay, are the Capri Suns a staple or was it for a special party or something? Uh, it's a staple for lunches when um, we have like picnic lunches if we go somewhere and we're packing a picnic the kid or you know for like a field trip or the kids go to homeschool co-op once a week they pack a lunch for that so they get a juice box in that okay so i would make the juice box boxes more of a treat like not more than once a month okay. so just get the little lunch thermoses you find them at thrift stores all the time you have some we do use them that's okay. what i would do now if you want them to um if you want them to stay cold you can fill them halfway with whatever drink you're putting in freeze them and then fill it the other half of the way 
and then put them in their lunchbox and that will keep their lunchbox cold and their drink will be cold at the same time. The other thing, actually, I think you're doing really good on all the other stuff. I mean, it looks good. It looks like you're um, buying in bulk enough. Garlic is an optional thing. I would use garlic powder for seasoning. That would save you a few bucks a month. So I would um, just use garlic powder if you want to cut, you know, another couple bucks. But otherwise, that's looking really good. So, all right, let's go to the next and Second. number two, hopefully it's less expensive. Um, it's less expensive from what I've seen. But um, we have a lot of baking things like to make desserts and things at home. Because my kids, my girls love to bake. Okay, here's a little tip. I use mini semi-sweet chocolate chips in my cookies. I can use a quarter of a bag instead of a whole bag because they're mini, they get distributed more evenly in the cookies so you don't need as many. I just made some oatmeal cookies from our Dining in a Dime Cookbook Volume 1. And I'm gonna save this and reuse it again. I don't know, I get at least three or four uses out of each piece of parchment paper. This is an Easter rabbit that I got on clearance for, I think, 50 cents. So I got a pound's worth of chocolate for 50 cents, and I just chop it up and use it as chocolate chips. All right, guys, it is time to vote. Please type one if you buy after holiday clearance chocolate. Now, have you actually ever done this? Me? Yes. I listened to your uh, video, um, I think it was after Halloween last year, and you said you did this, and I was mm -hmm. like, well, let's go see. So I did go to Walmart when they had the 70% off sale, and they had these cocoa bomb things mm -hmm. that people make mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are crazy expensive, and mm -hmm. I was like, that's cute, but I'll wait till next week when it was 90% off, and so when it was 90% off. I bought a, like five of them. <laughs> I mean, oh, yay! so much storage, but we use some and I still have a few, but I got a lot of really fun things that I would never typically buy um, mm -hmm. that are like the extra things, like the fancy, mm -hmm. really big decorated sprinkle thing. Mm -hmm. And when it was 90% yeah. off, I was like, yeah, sure. So, yeah. but I think they did ring me up wrong. Um, when I went and I had to go back and then they had to go through this whole process. Yeah. I think just like you did with the um, body wash. So yeah. it was like, you got to really be on it and like check it even when it's like the difference of 20 cents, mm -hmm. but still it's the point. Yeah, no, it's the point. And what I have learned now is anything on, that I pick up at, at on clearance at Walmart, anything, I take a picture on my phone and I take it up to the cash register with me. Yes. That saves me or somebody else going back and forth. And so now I take a picture and then I show it to them. As a matter of fact, I found bread. My bread has gone up to $1.32 here and I found it for $1.10. And I was like, oh, it hasn't been $1.10 for quite a few months. So I took a picture and I went up there and I said, this is ringing up wrong. And they're like, what? I said, nope, I got it right here. I said, it's on the lower left side of the shelf. If you want to go back and look at it, but I got the picture right here and they gave it to me for the dollar 10, but it's the point. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, I really think Walmart purposely doesn't mark down some things and I, it does take longer, but here's the thing. It doesn't take so long that it still hasn't been worth my time. So yeah, yeah. now the only other tip I will give you is when you find like the bath bomb, um, you know, molds and stuff and they have the chocolate and you don't need all the rest of the stuff, take it out of the package and just keep the chocolates in yes. a little yeah. organizer thing. So a lot of people don't think to take them out, but you can take cake mixes or whatever. If you need more space, Yes. just write with a Sharpie what's on them or what's in them. And when they expire, and then that'll help you a lot with some storage space. Great All idea. right. Yeah. All right, guys. So type one and let me know if you buy after... Halloween 
Christmas and, chocolate. Uh, we have lots of sauces um, because when I cook, I want to pretend like I went out to a restaurant, I guess, and I <laughs> um, love different sauces um, and making like international type foods. So I use a lot of like Asian sauces. Um, I also love all kinds of food, um, Italian, Greek a lot, um, Latin American, Mexican, Peruvian, those types of foods. So that's what I tend to make and that's what I have. I try to keep at least one extra thing, item, one extra of each item at the house um, mm -hmm. so that I'm not um, running out to the store all the time buying things, but sometimes that's overkill. Sometimes it's not. Um, with storage being an issue, I feel like I have to like keep a close eye on that. It can become overwhelming. I over. Okay, so the whole overwhelming thing, I totally get. I think it'll help if you get your things out of buckets and actually in the line of sight. And then you'll know, okay, I've already got three barbecue sauces. I don't need more barbecue sauce. So I think that'll really help with that. But as far as space, I think you're actually doing pretty well. I mean, it looks like you have a good variety. And I think it's really smart to go to the, all the ethnic stores because that's usually a cheaper way to get those specialty spices and those types of things. So that's great that you have that there. We're in Wyoming. Do we even have a mix? I don't, I don't, I, I think. Would, I'd be surprised if there wasn't a Mexican store. Well, we did have a Mexican store, but I think they may have closed down. <laughs> so we don't even have that. So I would you love to go right. back there and, and make a, make a grocery haul because that would be wonderful. Okay. Let's go to your, this is your storage room now. Flow pantry, <laughs> which is a baker's rack in one side of my laundry room. Um, there are a lot of canned goods, but everything's kind of jam packed in here. Um, I'm also trying to keep three to six months of uh, food items, uh, for emergencies, shelf stable things, because in Charleston, we also have hurricanes. So... Sometimes we evacuate, sometimes we don't, and a few times we've lost power, so we need to always be prepared for that, and you never know what's going to happen. Very good. A lot of times when I go shopping now, um, things that I normally buy are not there, and so if I had one or two at home, it really helps me in the long run. Um and I try and keep track of what I do have and um, keep a variety of things so that we don't get bored of eating the same things all the time. But this is pretty much it. These are all my Asian spices. Some things I buy online because I can't find them at the regular store anymore. Um, because I'm a stay-at-home mom and I've been a stay-at-home mom for a while. I have crunched the numbers on a lot of our meals and I try and keep our meals under five dollars uh, per meal on average. Um, usually breakfast will be less um, and dinners could be a little bit more. All right, guys, that is $1 per person per meal. Girlfriend, that is great. That is really, really good. Now, when you told me your numbers on your grocery bill, I was sitting here thinking, actually, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> you're spending about, I mean, you can cut, you can cut a couple hundred dollars, but really for the things that you're buying, you're actually doing a very good job. So $1 per meal. 
I know dinners are a little bit more and breakfasts are a little bit less. It's just the way it goes. But, you know, even if you did dinner for $7, which is from what you're showing me, it seems like you're doing, um, that is excellent. Absolutely excellent. I, there are tons of people that say, tell me all the time, it is just impossible to do that now. And it's not true. And I'm so glad that you are proving my point with the average person. People think I'm some sort of special person when I say I make, you know, $5 dinners. But, you know, I think it's great that you're able to do that too and show people that, you know, somewhere else in the country, you can do that also. So that's, that's wonderful. Um, okay, guys, we have our Dining on a Dime cookbook is 35% off. If you guys want $5 dinners all the time. We have volume one, which is red, volume two, which is blue. They go together, but you can use them separately. All different recipes. I just couldn't fit all the recipes into volume one. Our gluten-free, dairy-free edition is for those of you who are like me, who are gluten-free, dairy-free. Yes, you can cook and eat for very inexpensively gluten-free and dairy-free. And it's not very difficult with just ingredients that you can get at home. The links are in the description below. All right, let's go to the next. Um, let's see, I think this is your, uh, I, I can't remember what's next. But guys, I wanted you to vote first because I want to know how many people actually make dinner for $5. So type one if you make dinner for $5 and type two if your dinners are over $5. Because like Chelsea's mom says, Dollar to dollar fifty per meal is always our goal, and it's usually pretty easy to accomplish. Yes, I think it. I really think it is. So, guys, please let me know. But, um, my family eats every single meal at our house, um, all the time. Um, so it's a lot of cooking for me, and um, a lot of organizing and trying to stay on top of everything. Etc. Okay, so another tip would be make things easy. I got these air fryer liners right here at a yard sale. I don't know, there's got to be at least, I don't know, there's got to be at least a hundred in there for one dollar. And they even had food handling, <laughs> uh, what do you call those gloves? also in there so this will make clean up so much quicker for your air fryer so get these things if it's it's i'd rather have you buy these at around a penny or so peach piece i don't know i need to go look up and see but i'll leave the link in the description below but i'd rather have you buy these because you dread cleaning your air fryer than to go out to eat so make life simple and use things like these air fryer liners also mom got these silicone lid covers absolutely i love these they stretch you can throw them in the dishwasher they're reusable this is one of the best inventions ever she got all four of these four dollar i'll link these in the description below also but she got these for a dollar at a yard sale i think that's a pretty stinking good deal all right guys please vote type one if you buy stuff like this at yard sales and thrift stores and type two if there is just no way jose you're gonna do that <laughs> now here's the thing i i'm all for convenience i really am so you know you're talking about being sick and all that i would definitely make sure i don't know if you use your air fryer uh, a lot but i was just kind of showing you know use the air fryer liner use the foil liners you know um use the crock pot bags have those kinds of things on hand so at least when you're not feeling sick you don't have a huge mess with dishes that you have to do also paper plates feels bad <laughs> about buying things like that like there's just, why i don't i don't know i just always i guess i have my mom's voice in the back of my head like that's wasteful um but you're right so, it does save a lot of you know, extra work. And it is, it's the hour prep and the hour to clean up and everything that is extra exhausting. So what's more wasteful spending literally 25 to 50 cents on paper products when you're not feeling well versus 
40, 50, it's up to $60 now oh, just yeah. to go to Wendy's. Agreed. Like, ridiculous. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And um, it, yeah, those, I guess those like little voices don't really make sense anymore when you think about it. Um, because yeah, it, it really, it really is a lot better. Yeah. yeah. You've got to get that. You've got to get that mindset changed because that's where people get caught up is they get overwhelmed. You're saying you were overwhelmed yeah. and you got to get out of the overwhelm mode and get into, okay, this is still way cheaper than eating out. It's okay. And give yourself permission to do that. So, you know, I think it's fine to go ahead Sorry. and use those things to um, make your life more convenient. So, okay, let's go to your freezer now. Small garage freezer uh, where I keep extra foods and things that we can't fit in the regular freezer. I have frozen pizzas. We like to have a frozen pizza every Friday, tater tots, um, butter. I have pork chops that I divide up when I get the big packages and put them together. I just put a package together of what our family can eat. We love this pink salmon with the skin on. Um, and that's one of our more expensive meals, special treats. And these are wontons. We love having special treats of those. Extra chorizo sausage that we have for huevos rancheros. Um, all kinds of things, just extra breakfast sausage, um, chicken breast. I have a giant turkey down here that I bought for 80 cents a pound last Thanksgiving. Um, so we'll have to smoke that in the smoker and some frozen vegetables. We do have a lot of options for grocery stores in Charleston for ethnic foods, um, which I love. So we will go to the Asian grocery store and stock up on our sauces and things. Um, we have so many different kinds of, you know, cultures and foods and things available to us here. Um, I love to try different sauces and things and add it to our rotation. Here's my backyard garden. Okay. So sorry about that guys. Um, I would say your freezer is looking pretty good. Um, I would suggest though, do you defrost your freezer? No. How do you do that? <laughs> so what you need to do is defrost your freezer every six months about yeah, uh, because what happens is it becomes less energy efficient the more the ice builds up in there. So when it starts to cool down there, I mean, you guys you guys don't ever really freeze, do you, there? Well, okay. at, night, at night, it can get down to 20, but um, that's okay. like once. <laughs> okay, so since you're, so what I do is I put all my food in coolers or boxes and set it outside in the winter and then unplug it because mine's in the garage and my garage is warmer than the outside. But since you're in a, a climate where, cause you're in South Carolina that um, doesn't really have winters. What I would just do is really focus one month. You're using up everything in your freezer, get it all used up. Then what you don't have room for, get moved to your refrigerator freezer let it defrost, and then we're going to restock, okay? And so just unplug it, let everything melt. It'll take a couple of hours. If you want to run a blow dryer on it, it will go quicker. You can do that. Um, you can gently scrape it off with a plastic scraper after it's thawed for an hour or so to help move things along, but be very careful because some uh, freezers, you can damage the elements. That one's a chest freezer, so you should be fine. But if you have a stand-up freezer and it's on the shelves and stuff, sometimes the, uh, what's it called? Freezer coil, maybe, I guess is what it would be called, the freezer coil. 
can um, get damaged if you're scraping too hard, but you need to do that about every six months. So that's a little tip to save some money on your um, electric bill. All right, let's go look at your garden. I love to grow fruits and vegetables and flowers mostly. Um, this is my husband's smoker. He loves to smoke meat. So I like to get big cuts of meat where we can cook twice as much um, food we need for the weekend. That way I can have like smoked chicken or smoked pork, pulled pork, whatever, um, to get us through the, the next week. It'll be, and so that it's easier for us, um, or for me at least, uh, for meal prep. I don't have to do everything from scratch. I have to say, I would absolutely love to have a smoker. So I have a little bit of envy there. I'm trying not to, but <laughs> I will tell you guys, check for yard sales and thrift stores. I got these for a dollar and wow. some were free at a yard sale. And then some I got at a thrift store. Look at different places to find your smoker chips. Now, I just use these on my regular grill, which isn't as good as a smoker, but hey, you know until we get the house paid off, gotta have priorities. So <laughs> anyway, look for these in different places to help you save money on things like smoking your meat. All right, guys, it is time to vote again. Type one, if you buy stuff like this at thrift stores and type two, if it's no way, Jose, again, I am shocked at how many people don't buy these kinds of things at thrift stores and garage sales. But guys, you can get some really stinking good deals. Now, I totally get it. Some thrift stores are better than others in other areas of the country and garage sales are better. Sometimes it's Facebook Marketplace or the recycle, upcycle type groups that you have. So just look, even just telling your friends and family, if somebody gets rid of a smoker that they don't want anymore, you know, you could do that kind of thing. Do you have uh, good garage sales and yard sales in your area that you can use Janet? Um, not compared to yours. I mean, I've seen what you get at your thrift stores and yard sales and I'm like shocked. I have never, literally never seen smoker chips anywhere. Okay. The best thing that ever happened was our friend cut down their pecan tree and gave us like mm -hmm. the wood. So then we chopped it up and used that. And that was that but, yeah, that um, was going to be my next tip. Make sure, because I know when we were there, I saw tons of apple trees. Make sure you get free wood Yeah, when you do that. That's definitely a way to save. Yeah. Our, um, we, I love, I grew up Goodwill shopping. This is actually from the Goodwill. But Ooh, um, good. yeah, like clothes, great at the Goodwill. Um, but um the, the household items, no way. And okay. if they're practically non-existent in Charleston, I think everybody, it must be an upseller because it is mm -hmm. completely picked over and or stuff's falling apart. The place that is better for furniture and things like that, like dishwares, pots and pans, is our restore, the Habitat mm -hmm. for Humanity restore. There's only one and it's like way the heck out and they have weird hours, but it's always great to go there if you need household items. Mm -hmm. And our yard sales, people barely have yard sales here in the summer because it's 1,000 degrees with 1,000% humidity. Um, so our yard sale season's in the winter. And honestly, like when I've had yard sales, people either, if you price something for a dollar, they want it for a quarter after your practically giving it away anyway. So it's like the Facebook marketplace is pretty much where people sell things that they want to make money off of, mm -hmm. but they price things so high. It's yeah. like, I don't know. It's, it's very different because I use, we've lived in several other States and um, like I grew up in Maryland and the thrift stores in Maryland were amazing. They would be the size of a shopping center and oh, wow. like a, like an abandoned grocery store, I guess. And um, like an old mm -hmm. Safeway or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they were huge. And here they're like tiny and everybody wants $400 for their precious antique. And it's, it's not the same at all. 
Um, and there's, yeah, stuff like that is, is hard to come by, but, um, yeah, I might come to Wyoming to look at Cheryl's yard sales. <laughs> <laughs> My kids come and now, now they're like, are there any garage sales or thrift stores open this weekend? <laughs> I was like, yeah. That's funny because, uh, my kids have brought their friends and now husbands up and um, husband up. And um, the first thing they asked was, are there any garage sales this weekend? <laughs> so now we got and those she, rose yeah. gliders at the, the yard sale. And I was like, I can't believe she found those gliders. You know, they're amazing. It's hilarious because even Jack had his friends up and, and they're all 14. And the 14 year olds wanted to go garage selling. And so we had to time it when they came up to the, it was the weekend. And, so it's really funny. But the thing is, it might just be better for you to hit the Walmart clearance, you know, and just make sure that you that you can go, you know, when they do the 90 percent off and check those things. So that might be a better option for you. You just have to really work with what you have, you know, in your area. So I totally get that. But yeah, um, I you know, guys, I I must admit that here in Wyoming, I, now this is crazy, but I did pray about this before I moved here because I was like, Lord, we're not going to have our really good thrift stores here in Colorado that we love. What are we going to do? And not only did we get thrift stores, but we got thrift stores and garage sales here. So I was like, thank you, Jesus, because we were we were really concerned because, you know, like 95 percent of the stuff that comes into our house is used. And so I really didn't know how how we were going to do that. But you know, it is a matter of just looking around and some of the little church ones, they have, you know, really good prices because they just want to get rid of it. But then other ones, you know, it's like you said, they're high. So just just keep looking around. And, and it sounds like you're doing a pretty good deal, getting good deals already. So, um, you know, I think you're probably doing doing pretty good there. So I'm not too worried about I'm it. I'm making my menu for the day or for the week I like to come out to the garden and see what I have this is a tromboncino squash that's fun and when you pick them green they taste like zucchini and when you pick them yellow like this color if you let them ripen all the way they taste like a butternut squash Okay, I have to tell you, I have never heard of those before. Probably because you can grow zucchini, and we can't grow zucchini here to save our lives. Like, oh, really? Bugs are insane. Like, oh. we have seasons of bugs that just uh -huh. destroy everything, and you just fight the bugs yeah. all summer to get like one squash. You're like, yeah. so we had to plant really early here, and you can only get one round of zucchinis before the squash bugs vine borers just destroy the whole plant um but i have found that the tromboncinos the stems are thicker and so mm -hmm. the bugs can't penetrate it um mm -hmm. as easily and so they actually last and some years are better than others some years you're just like drowning in squash but yeah. it's extra great because if you cut them green they you can use them shred them up like zucchini or mm -hmm. chop them I like a zucchini, but if you let it stay on the vine until it's that like tan color, um, it, it works like a butternut squash too. So mm. it's a great plant. And I don't, I don't, they, I got the seeds from, um, what is that place called? It's like Southern seed exchange, I think, okay. yeah. but I don't think I think you could grow it anywhere. Um, and I just think the longer the season you have, the more harvest you'll get. But you do plant it early in the spring and you keep the same plant. And if you give it room to grow, it will like put its roots down and then you'll get little squash just meandering through your yard. Wow. Okay. Well, I have to say, I'm impressed that you kept going and found one that will work for your area. A lot of people just give up on their gardening and they don't keep trying different varieties. And, you know, my pumpkins this year are awful. <laughs> I mean, I, I literally have one little tiny squash for that's a, a gourd and then like three little mini pumpkins. And that's all I got. That's, hey, like, that's better than nothing. <laughs> Some years so, it's nothing. 
but I'm going to keep trying different varieties for the shorter season to see if I can eventually get something. And so sometimes with gardening, just so people know, you have to keep trying different things. It doesn't necessarily mean that, um, that you, uh, need to just totally give up, you know, just keep trying different ideas and different things. All right, guys, our Dining on a Dime cookbooks are on sale 35% off right now for our Labor Day sale at livingonadime.com. The link is in the description below. If you want to save money and cook $5 dinners like Janet, all of these recipes, almost all of them, I would say, I think all of them are $5 or less if you shop on sale. You guys can start saving money right now, but you can have variety with quick and easy recipes that get you in and out of the kitchen in a hurry. All right, let's look at the rest of your garden here. All of our summer vegetables are mostly done, except for our green beans that grow on this trellis. So I have a lot of green beans that we eat and um, peppers and tomatoes. I have frozen tomatoes, um, mm -hmm. canned jarred sauce. Um, not enough that it would keep me from buying any, um, mm -hmm. but just to supplement. And I have cherry tomatoes still growing, but during the July and August, uh, in the south, especially in Charleston and further south than us, um, pretty much everything's dead and fried up by July and August. So I'm happy to have a few things left. <laughs> and mostly I have herbs. So I rarely, if ever, need to buy herbs. Mm -hmm. And this is my high tunnel, which... I still have peppers growing in pots. I still have a lot of basil. And um, I'm trying to plant my second round of cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I have one struggling tomato left. I'm hoping it sets some fruit, but it is so hot that it's really not, even with shade cloth on our little greenhouse um, or high tunnel. I have green beans, another round of green beans growing over here. Um, they are not, they just got planted, so they're not setting fruit yet. But I like to eat our vegetables that were growing in the garden first, and then meal plan around that. Um, but it's fun, and it keeps us all occupied and having something to do after all of our homeschool's done. Here's how I typically do my... Okay, so I'm really impressed, actually, with your garden. I mean, for those of you who don't know what a high tunnel is, it's just a shaded greenhouse that keeps the sun out <laughs> instead of letting the sun in <laughs> um, in hot climates. And you can use it during the winter in milder climates without having to heat it quite so much. Am I right? Did I get all that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you would put plastic on it if you want to keep the heat in. Um, and you can still keep the shade cloth on, just it depends on how much sun you get. I know the sun is, you get longer um, yeah. sunlight hours. Mm -hmm. In other places, we get shorter sunlight hours where it's, um, you know, only, there's only sun for like eight hours a day at yeah. the lowest point, I think. But yeah. So, I mean, I think you're doing great freezing the tomatoes. If people, if you guys don't know, you can freeze tomatoes. I just did some today. Just throw them in a um, Ziploc bag. Throw them in there. When you bring them out and defrost them, the peels will just slide right off. So you don't have to throw them in water and peel them or anything. If you want to save, save space, you can put the tomatoes in tomato sauce, make it into tomato make the tomatoes into tomato sauce and then freeze it in zipper baggies. And that way you don't have to can it, but you still have your tomatoes, which is what I'm doing. So after you guys saw my canning fiasco last week, I'm done with canning again. <laughs> I try canning every, let's see, how long has it been? I try canning every 25 years. <laughs> That's my stint for this time. And I'm done. <laughs> it's 
like, oh, Tara. So anyway, but I think that's great that you're able to freeze all that and use it for later. All right, let's look at your kitchen. My meal prep for the week in my planner. I have a little section for menus and I will just make a section for every day of the week. We have streamlined our menu somewhat where we will have a frozen pizza um, every Friday night and um, we have the store-bought cinnamon rolls um, every Sunday morning um, and um, I just buy those from Aldi the you know generic store brand and Saturday morning my husband makes breakfast um, so we will do bacon and eggs or um, a Dutch baby or something like that and he will take care of that meal um, and I'm just gonna write bacon and eggs here um, and then the rest of the week I decide um, depending on if we're going anywhere um, in the evening, um, like kids have sports or whatever, it would be either a freezer meal, uh, a meal that I would prep ahead, or something that um, would not require as much like hands-on um, meal in the evening. All right. So let me just say, I think that's great. People make menu planning way too difficult. <laughs> if you want to have pizza every Friday night and bacon and eggs every sun Saturday morning and canned cinnamon rolls every Sunday morning, I think that's terrific. Now, if you want to go even further, you could just have Mexican food on Tuesday. So you can have taco Tuesday. You can do Italian food on Wednesday. You can do crock pot night on the kids of sports nights. And then at least part of the, the decision-making process is out of it. So if you want to go ahead and sign every single day of the week, just a category, whether it's crock pot or Italian or whatever, because you like making all the different kinds of foods, then that might help make the decision process for meals a little bit easier also. And then of course, the 10 meals, you know, I always keep 10 meals standard and then I rotate through those, but that way, at least you always have those 10 meals down that are easy and you keep the ingredients on hand that you can do for that, which we're going to talk about that for just a little bit, um, in just a little bit further down here. Okay. So if you have my undated planner, this is how I do dinner. I just write down what I'm going to have for dinner. So I know I'm using green chili tonight. I froze the leftover chicken with broth and I'm going to put that in the crock pot with some green chilies. And then after the show, dinner will be all ready for us to go. Won't you be excited about that, dear? Yes. Yes, I will. Do you like my green chili? Yes, I absolutely love your green chili. Oh, thanks. I'm here in the new pantry. For our dining on a dime cookbook? Yes. <laughs> I'm back. I'm in the car at the Walmart parking lot and I'm going to try and finish my uh, grocery shopping list um, before I go in. I had a lot of things happen this weekend so um, here's where we're at making a grocery list in the parking lot. So here we go. Let's finish it. Hey let me tell you you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> it was a crazy day in that parking lot. Like, I don't know what was going It was right before the hurricane. Shenanigans mm -hmm. were happening. There was a guy putting a whole grocery cart full of McDonald's boxes of fries in like a Honda Civic. Like shoving boxes of fries everywhere while I was trying to make this video. And I'm, he's right next to me. And I'm like, what is going on with this fry man next to me? Oh, you should have filmed that. That would have been crazy. I was like, 
does he work at Walmart? At like the McDonald's at Walmart? What is going? Did he steal those fries? I don't want any trouble. I just want to go grocery shopping. I would have been like, hey, dude, what are you doing? There was something else going on that day in the parking lot. And I was like, of course, of course. Oh my God. That's hilarious. That would have been funny if you would have been filming and then, and then you had that in the background. He kept looking at me and I was like, did you steal those fries? <laughs> That's great. Okay, let's go into Walmart and see what you got. I thought I came to Walmart early enough to beat a lot of people but it's pretty noisy and there's a lot of people here so i'm gonna try and grab what i need and get out of here okay let's talk about your lactose um free milk now this is fairly expensive um I don't know if you know this, but you can buy the lactose enzyme pills and they are six cents for each serving. So instead of buying lactose free milk, you could you could save 40, not quite 40, 30, what, 38 cents, something like that cents per serving. If you got the pills instead of the milk. So have you guys tried? using the lactose pills instead of just the milk? I have. Um, and I don't know if it was the brand that I tried, but I got one. I tried it one time. I really didn't investigate it much further after that. And it did not make a difference for me. Um, okay. And then my daughter, who is all, was also lactose intolerant, she's too young to take pills. Um, she, okay. It's been since she was born, since I was pregnant with her is when we develop this weird lactose intolerance, but, um, she can't take pills. I was wondering if there was something you could put in the milk. Mm -hmm. um, so what you can do is you can take the pill and just open it up and put it in the cup of milk. Oh, okay. Yep. Good idea. Yeah. And if you want to take, let's see, there's eight servings in that bottle. You could just take eight pills, put them in there, shake it up really good. And then you've got lactose free milk. Awesome. So it can be, the type of digestive enzymes. So it's worth, it's worth the investment to try one or two different, two or three different brands to see if you could find one that'll work. Um, a lot of health food stores and Walmart will let you return open supplements. So like in Colorado, there was a health food store called uh, Natural Grocer. And if it was in 30 days and it was mostly filled, you know, like three quarters of it filled, then if the supplement made you sick or it didn't work, you could take it back and get your money back. Oh, good. So you might ask Walmart if they have, I know they have digestive enzymes. And so you might ask them if, if you can return them. You might ask a manager. Sometimes the cashiers don't always know. Actually, even the return people sometimes don't know. We've had problems with the return people. And Mike's like, no, I'm telling you, we just bought this today. I know. I just, it's on my card. You're just not looking right, you know? And so you may have to ask a couple of people. But um, the other option is if you like oat milk or flax milk, those can be a cheaper lactose casein-free, milk-free, dairy-free option. Some people have a problem with the proteins in milk, not just the lactose. So mm. um, they have to go that way. But that might also, for baking or cooking, you could use the oat milk. And if you use our um, recipe and our gluten-free, dairy-free here for the oat milk, it'll be way cheaper than buying it for, um, for baking at least. So that might be a help for that. Um, okay, let's see what we got next here. Um, oh, yeah. And I just keep mine on the kitchen table in a little just jar. And then I just pick it up and take it with my meal. And that way I'm not getting up and down and having to remember it in the cabinet and all of that. So that's that's how I do that. All right, next is... Yeah, one gallon of milk for or half gallon of milk for 
until I can get to Aldi because the prices at Walmart are a lot higher and they're frequently out of a lot of things, but at least we have options. Here I'm just browsing the prices for Greek yogurt, which I use a lot in cooking to substitute for um, different things like sour cream, but the prices are a lot higher here than Aldi. Okay, let's talk about the Greek yogurt for just a minute. Did you know you can make homemade Greek yogurt? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's I have made it, but it's, and it's not as good, but it does take oh, a little happened? bit of time. And you strain it multiple times. and uh, You shouldn't have to strain it multiple times. Really? Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So if you have the, follow the recipe in here, but okay. actually it's pretty simple. So it does take some time. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you put it in and um, I was going to do it for this video, except when we had to move the video up, I didn't have time to do it. But what you do is you just mix the yogurt with the milk, let it sit overnight, 24 hours. Um, it depends on how warm your kitchen is. If your kitchen's not very warm, then it'll sometimes take 48 hours. Oh, my but kitchen's always warm. It's 78 <laughs> At always okay. at least in our house so yeah so then yours should set up pretty quick 24 36 hours and then i just line a strainer with cheesecloth and just let it drain for another overnight and that's it okay so it shouldn't you shouldn't have to strain i don't know whose video you i was were probably making it more complicated yeah and i was yeah. like hanging it on a doorknob yeah. and things okay so actually next week we have another lady who uses a lot of greek yogurt and so i'm gonna actually go through the process so be watching for that video and i'm gonna show how to make it because it's it's actually quite simple so Great. you can if you can get your milk for two dollars a gallon i i'm sure you guys there have it on sale at um you know some of your stores but if you can get it for around two dollars a gallon three dollars a gallon it's Probably, I'm going to do the price comparison just to make sure, but it's probably a lot cheaper to buy it that way than um, buy it at the store. Now, I will say when we wrote this book, Greek yogurt really wasn't a thing too much. It was, a, it was just starting to come into fashion. So the prices may have come down on it since I wrote the book, but I'll do a price comparison and, and find out for sure for you. All right, let's see. You're going to show us are your stash in the car. So I came out to my car because it's actually a lot quieter out here in the parking lot than inside the Walmart. The leg quarters ended up being 7.72 for 10 pounds. So not quite what they used to be, but still a good deal. And the cereal ended up being $2.67. Also not the best deal on cereal. Okay, not the best, but I mean, it's not horrid either. If you're going right before a hurricane, I can totally get that. But yeah, I mean, I try to keep my cereal $1.97 a box or less now. But similar to what Aldi has, at least in price per ounce. And now we have to go to Aldi. Okay, so we just got a comment real quick, and I, I wanted to share that. Heather says, if you make your own yogurt, you get the whey for free, and it has six-month shelf life, good for baking and smoothies. I totally forgot to mention that. Yeah, you can use the whey in your smoothies and your baking, and I just put it in the fridge and then use it that way. So that's another thing on the Greek yogurt that um, I forgot to mention. Now, on your Walmart bill here, you paid $57.68 but you got toilet paper, which we don't count in groceries, which was $21. And so you ended up spending $36 total at Walmart. So that's not too bad. Here's the water, the case of water that I got uh, for our hurricane preps. I thought it was the only thing we really needed that we didn't already have or we were running super low on. Um, so... Um, you also won't see in my other um, haul of groceries the uh, peanut butter and jelly because um, I buy little small containers of those every week and I put them in our blessing box. And so we already ran those over 
to the blessing box before um, we got home. And I think that's about it. In my receipt, I did notice I had my, I did not separate the toilet paper um, at the Walmart, but um, I don't know if that will be a problem. And it was just a crazy week with all the hurricane preps that are happening right now and uh, running around. Okay, so now for your water preps, I saw later in the video, which we haven't got there yet, juice and sodas, refill them. This is a lot cheaper than buying the bottled water. Yeah. So I would cut the bottled water um, and please excuse me a moment. <laughs> I will cut the bottled water and um, save your money on bottled water instead. As I'm drinking my soda, for those of you wondering, I am having a stomach bug today. So <laughs> I have been sipping on, on Sprite to help me uh, stay uh, here. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. Um, so if you cut out the hurricane water, that'll save you, you know, a couple of dollars every month or however often it is you need to buy it. But it's also, I've noticed that the soda bottles hold up a lot better than the bottled water in the gallon jugs or the little containers. I have had those break when I've had those before. So the soda, the soda jugs or the soda bottles um, do hold up a lot better on that. So, all right, let's go to Ollie. Here's our first kind of chips that we're getting. And some Oreos. Now we're looking for bread. We normally look for ciabatta bread. Okay, so I have to ask, what in the world is ciabatta bread? I've never heard of it. It's fancy bread. I mean, it's a, it's like a crusty, small portion size like um uh, it's just crusty okay. bread i don't know but it's sandwich bread um okay so you could cut fancy, that out yeah it's, it's fancy luxurious okay extra special whatever bread okay yeah. so you could okay so that could be cut out just for regular bread for mm -hmm. sandwiches okay all righty i never heard of it before oh mike just showed me a picture okay yep i see what it is now okay and a lot of things are gone. So, I don't know. Let's we'll think about what are we going to get instead of ciabatta bread? Hmm. These are super cheap, so we got to get a bunch of avocados. The sugar was like $4 last week, and now it's two seventy-five. dollars So that's good. Here is what we got at Aldi this week. The total ended up being $143.42 just at Aldi. And then we had um, the separate shopping trip to Walmart. So I think they both come in to just about $200 and my goal this week was to find the least expensive ground beef in Charleston and um, the least expensive ground beef ended up being this, the $3.59. So I'm going to break it down into 
one pound um, bags and vacuum seal it and save it for a bunch of different recipes. And hopefully also put some up in um, these gallon size bags for um, doing like freezer meals, like um, put it in the crock pot and cook all day kind of meals, like dump meals. Um, so that's it. I'm really excited to hear your feedback, Tara. And um, I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, so first of all, let me run through everything that I think you could be saving on. So let me go back here just a little bit. Now, in this screenshot right here, <laughs> cranberry juice and soda, what are those for? Was it something special? Uh, I let the kids have one cup of soda on Fridays when we have pizza. Okay. Um, and they have juice at dinner. Um, and yeah, they're all extra things that we could definitely okay. cut out. But um, I try and ration them because they could just drink the whole thing in one day. Um, but um, yeah, that was those are those are the things that it's like, you know, you just you're trying to decide when you're at the grocery store, you're like, is it worth it or not? And when we were like before, when we were paying off debt, it's like absolutely no soda and no juice. But now that we've paid off debt, we're like, well, could we have one juice? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. So okay. it's, it's always playing this like um, balance, balancing mm -hmm. game. Um, but also the kids don't need to drink juice all day long. So, yeah. Okay. So first of all, I would not give it to, I would not give juice with any meals at all. Um, because what juice does is it fills them up and then they don't actually eat real food. So they're not full and they get hungry like right away. That so is if you're gonna, <laughs> yeah. So if you're going to give it to them, I would give it like as a special treat with a snack or something like that okay. and not with their dinner. So they say full. Now on the kefir, why are you buying that instead of making it yourself? That's a great question. Um, I never thought about it okay. and it's easy. Yeah. Okay, so you can make that yourself, and I will try and find um, find a recipe and do it. It's the same as yogurt and buttermilk. So, I mean, basically, kefir is just a fancy buttermilk is what it is. Okay. And so um, I will go and see if I can find a recipe and do that in a future show for you because I think you could make that for way cheaper than the $3.50 or so that it was. Yeah. So you could save on that. And then I think the avocados, great deal on the avocados. Um, the chicken wings are pretty expensive. So those are $3 a pound. Yeah. That's what do you true. use them for? Well, we totally <laughs> busted our $5 meal budget because it was like, first first day of watching football thing and okay. um i decided to make a splurge meal for watching football so oh, okay. we had chicken just buffalo wings with mm -hmm. carrots and um i think i made guacamole and chips um for you know okay. our four hour long football watching day <laughs> okay but yeah All right, that was definitely fine. not in the five dollar budget Okay. All right. And that's a special, I mean, I get it. Special day. Um, let's see. You're okay on the butter. Um, I see more orange juice there. How much juice are you giving the kids? So the orange juice um, is, yeah, like they can either choose one or the other to have juice with, you know, dinner. And that was it. But I have noticed you're totally right. They like definitely eat less mm -hmm. since we started doing that. And I thought I was doing better giving it to them at with a meal because then they were just, I was, I could like visually see them only drink one cup of juice, mm -hmm. but yeah. then they were getting really full and I was like, darn it. Like my great plans foiled. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So if that's the problem. Is that once a week that you buy two? 
Yes. Okay. I would definitely cut that. I mean, you, you can cut that back to, um, once, uh, one a week, but honestly, okay. Just be prepared for dealing with comments with this deer, but <laughs> I would just give him Kool-Aid. It would cost you about 70 cents. Well, with your Aldi sugar, it'd be even less than that. Probably 50 cents, 50 to 60 cents to make a jug of Kool-Aid. That's the same amount as you're getting in that juice. It's the same amount of sugar. I know the fiber and all that baloney, but let me tell you, juice is just extra calories. It, it really is. Um, and so I would just make up a, a thing of Kool-Aid and just give it to them as a treat with a snack instead of buying the juices for the dinner. So, I mean, you're talking, that would be one, two, three, four, five, you're talking 20 to $30 a month just in juice. Yeah. So you could cut on that. Okay. So now the next thing I noticed was the chips. <laughs> okay. So you're telling me, you told me you spend about $10 a week on chips. Yeah. 40 to $50 a month on chips. That's a yeah. lot of chips. I know. And I, it's definitely my weakness. I do love chips. Like I could, I'll okay. pass on ice cream, but okay. I love chips. And I thought I was doing better because I wasn't buying, you know, individually packaged things. But yeah, it's excessive. It's a lot of chips. Like, yeah. you know, when you okay. see it all laid out, you're like, oh, <laughs> I know. And when you put it into perspective of 40 or $50, that's, yeah. you know, a good chunk of change. Okay. So next is the ham. And I think think oh i can't remember did i put the graphic in there let me check real quick and see if i put the graphic in there but um it, well i'll just show it if if it comes up i'll just i'll just talk about it more but on the ham um what you can do is go to walmart and get the big the big chunks of ham and then big what's it called <laughs> Sorry, my like brain a, is like a pork butt or like a like no, a like just the Easter ham, just the hams at Easter that are pre-cooked hams is what I'm trying to say, I guess. And then have the butcher cut those up into deli slices. And that's three dollars and fifty cents a pound instead of almost six dollars a pound. Wow. And then just put those in your freezer, uh, just put them in the bags and just pull them out for um lunches. And you can save, let me see, what did I figure for you? You didn't say how many um, sandwiches you're making. How many sandwiches are you making with that a week? Everybody eats a sandwich. Um, my youngest has peanut butter and jelly, but that would be my husband, myself, my two daughters. Okay, so that's one week's a ham for the family? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you cut that, um, now Aldi is a little bit cheaper, but if you cut that out, you could save, where did it go on my notes? You could save about 10 to $15 a week, or I mean a month on yeah. those. So that would be another way to go. Um, and then we talked about the lactose milk. You could cut that out. And then I was noticing your ground beef. Do you not have ground beef any cheaper than... The three dollars and I think it was no. seventy five minutes. I've or something. been looking for those like amazing sales or clearances, and I'm we don't have clearances. Like the most you'll ever find are at Aldi. It says fifty cents off, and there's a fifty cents off sticker. Um, so you don't have Albertsons or Safeway or Kroger that puts any of those on sale. Food Lion. Um, we do have a Food Lion, and a lot of times they're more expensive than Aldi. Um, and they do have sales, which Aldi really doesn't have too many sales. They're just cheaper in general. Yeah. Um, I never buy meat at Aldi, actually. When I had Aldi, I never once bought meat there because it was so much more expensive than our Kroger store. So what I would do is check, just diligently check every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I don't know when your ads come out there, but diligently check for like six weeks and just see if it happens to go on sale. And if it does... 
I would stock up then and put it in your freezer bags and do that um, route. It would save you quite a bit of money on that. And then, of course, we've got treats like the sugar cones and the ice cream. I'm fine with that, you know. But let's get to some meal ideas. Okay. What I would do for you is I would definitely pre-cook your meats. So when you're making tacos or chili or whatever, don't cook one pound of ground beef. Cook five or even 10 pounds. 10 pounds is a little much, but I would cook up to five pounds and then put them in little packets to pre-cook them and have them frozen. Put my hamburgers in the fold top sandwich bags, which are a penny piece. You fold the top down and this little flap comes over. Then I pop these in the refrigerator and these are one meal portions, about three quarters of a pound. Okay, now I misspoke. I popped those in the freezer, not the refrigerator. So then I just put those little packets in the freezer and I just pull out a packet that's pre-cooked and you can do the same with chicken. Put your chicken, if you watched, I think it was the last show I did, put your chicken in the crock pot and get it really super, super soft and cooked and well cooked and then shred it. And I put it in the same packets. When your meat is pre-cooked, that is like half the battle right there. Then all you have to do is take all those ingredients you have and just throw them together. And it it's, you're like, oh, is that going to actually save time? Yes, it does. Because you really, you spend about 10 to 15 minutes just cooking your meats usually for those types of things. Then you can do all your dump and go crock pot meals. And it's a lot quicker. You can do that with um, your shredded chicken, your shredded roast, your ground beef. And then with those, I make green chili, honey baked chicken, Maple glazed chicken, those would be chicken quarters that you could easily do that would be like three ingredients, four ingredients, and you can just throw them in the oven and you don't have to get any dishes dirty or anything like that. You can just put them in the pan, mix everything in your um, measuring cup and just pour it over the top and just throw it in the oven. Then with your pre-cooked meats, you could make your chilies, your pasta salads, and don't forget easy meals like roasts and pork roasts and pork lunch. So those can um, all work for quick meals, but you can divide them up if you get a big pork loin for, uh, Aldi might have pork loin for fairly reasonable. I just looked and one of your stores had it, shoot, I can't remember which one it was, had it for, I would think it was $1.99 a pound. I think and it was so Lion. I I saw been. that this week and I was like, ooh. Yeah. So that's the kinds of things that I would um, stock up on so that you can start saving more on your grocery bill. Now, before we get to our freebie today, let me, where's my notes? Here it is. Let me tell you all the ways that I found that you could save. Okay. So if you cut the ham, you could save about 12 to 15 dollars a week if you got a, a big ham and cut it in package it yourself the lactose milk if you can find a digestive enzyme you can save about 20 dollars a month chicken wings okay if that's a staple then you could save quite a bit but since it was a special thing um then you know I, I'm fine with special things. I really am. The ground beef, the cheaper meats, you could save about $20 to $25 a month if you can get your, your beef and your chicken and your pork to 2 to $3 a pound instead of $3 and over a pound. Um, cutting the sugar cones, that'll save you about $8 to $10 a month. Now, cutting the chips about 40 to 50 dollars a month uh the water 259 i didn't know if that was a regular thing or if it was just a hurricane thing um but there's you know a few dollars the kefir you could save about five to ten dollars a month depending on how much you buy it and drink it now salmon's pretty expensive 
I would cut the salmon <laughs> and you could save yourself. Pro I don't know. How often do you eat the salmon? Um, probably once a month. Um, that two pound bag, they have all the salmon individually portioned. So we get two or three, we get three meals from one bag. Um, at least I feel like there's always leftovers too, but $15 um, a bag or so. How say again? Is it about $15 a bag or so? Oh no. It's like 11. 10, 11, I think it's 10 ish. Okay. Okay. So you, okay. So you could probably save 10 to $15 then if you cut the salmon, but you know, that's fine. So I'm thinking a month, if you cut those things, you could cut around $20 or 20, $200 off your grocery bill, just cutting all those things. Now, one other thing I did want to point out that I forgot to mention back on your shelves when um, you were showing your shelves and all your, your extra storage, I would move those shelves down three or four inches and give you more storage space. And then on the top, put all your paper towels or, you know, your stack your canned goods that you don't use all the time. That's just hurricane food, that type of thing. And that way you can still see the foods, but it will give you more storage space for your extra supplies. I mean, you are very smart. You're in hurricane country. You, if a hurricane hit without any um, notice, you would be fine. And I think that's great. And so I think you're actually doing pretty well. Um, I would... If, if you're really wanting to get serious about paying off your house, you said you're totally debt free except for your house. You said you paid off $67,000 in debt. That's great. I mean, that's really, you did, you said you were able to go on Dave Ramsey and do the debt free scream. So I think that's terrific. Now, the only thing is though, <laughs> you know where I'm going, don't you? <laughs> You have doubled your income since then, but <clears throat> you're not doubling your debt payment on your house. True. You're, you're not even coming close. You're only putting a minuscule amount compared to the extra amount that you're making on your income. And honestly, if you would double down again, I don't know if you guys realize this, but with the extra income that you're bringing in, you could pay off your house in about three to four years. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Chips really your house. Uh. <laughs> but that's what you got to tell Put yourself. In perspective. Yeah, yeah it really that's does. what you got to tell yourself. And if you, you said you were needing a new car, that's fine. I totally get it. But just think, if you went from a $20,000 car to a $10,000 car, that's even quicker you would get yeah. it paid off. Now it's, I'm totally okay if you want to do those things, but the amount that you told me for your income, you could really get this house paid off quick. And if you guys really were super tight frugal again, you could get your house paid off in three years, probably easy. If you were living on the income you were before. Yeah. Doing all those super, super tight waddy things. True. You could get your house paid off. Then you were talking about wanting to save for your kids' college and all that. Don't put anything in that for two or three years. They're young. You still have plenty of time. Then when your house is paid off, you can pay for your college then because your house is paid off. Yeah, very true. But you've still got, let's see, seven, eight years before they even are thinking about college. And so... You know, it would be better for you guys to be 100% set debt free before the kids go into college and then help them instead of worrying about their college now. And then they get to college and you're like, wait a minute, your husband has a heart attack or a stroke or something and he's on disability or something like that. And your house isn't paid off. Your house payment is pretty low. So, I mean, I think you would probably be okay because you guys know the tips and tricks.
But you know what? I know you were super, super intense, but if you would get, and it, and it gets tiring, I totally understand. Believe me, I totally understand. But if you could just get intense again, your house could be paid off in three or maybe four, three or four years. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I think I it would be that. great. And just think of how freeing that would be. Think of how much money you would have with your husband's current income to just go on a vacation. Yeah, agreed. And I think it'd be fine. Even with the investing, you said you're investing 15% right now and you're tithing, which I'm assuming is 10%. Even with all of that, you could still get your house paid off in three to four years. And then you can just go do what you want because you're, you're getting set then. And then you can buy all the chips you want. Then you can buy all the juice you want. And yeah, have my cake you know, later and eat my chips too. <laughs> 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 it's true it's a short amount of time it really is a short amount of time and these are extra luxury things that we really don't need and it is great to see it like put into perspective yeah. it's wonderful. yeah yeah so i hope that gives you a little bit of clarity maybe um personally i think you're doing great you really are you have it down i think you are just making more money now. So you're, so you're getting lax because you're making more money. I totally understand. Um, but if you would really buckle down and get tight or even buckle down halfway, you could still be done in five or six years, sure. you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, because I, I, I just think you're doing really, really well. So guys, we are offering, a free ebook right now, Chief Family Meal Plans for One Week ebook. Mike is going to put the link in there. Jen, this may help give you some more ideas. Um, all these ideas are in our Dining on a Dime cookbook, but um, you guys, that offer is free until September 12th at 11.59 p.m. We are going to have it free for you guys. 24 hours only, guys. We're, we're not having our deals run for weeks on end or unending anymore. So if you want to grab it, you need to watch our shows and get it. Janet, do you have any questions left for me? No, I think you gave me a lot of great ideas. And I really appreciate the permission to have some convenience items. <laughs> there's a lot of PTSD after being so gazelle intense. But I think there's a good balance to hit. Um, yeah. And when you have a goal that you want to hit and if it's a big enough goal with big enough reward, giving up these little things like chips yeah. <laughs> are, yeah. are okay. So I really, I really appreciate it. And I think you're, you're spot on. You really hit it. Okay, good. I'm glad I could help. I am so thankful to you for taking all the time to videotape that. And you had a lot of tech issues too. So we appreciate you guys persevering because once I got the footage, I was like, oh yes, this is going to be great. So I was super excited. You guys were able to figure that out. So thank you so much. If I didn't send it to you already, I'm going to be sending you a hundred dollars gift card to our store that you can buy anything you want. So look, be looking for that. And thank you guys for being with us and we are going to run tonight because I am not feeling very well. So go check out our Labor Day sale at livingonadime.com. We have all of our cookbooks on sale for 35% off right now, guys. Our volume two and volume one go together right here, but they are separate books with totally different recipes. And then this is our gluten-free, dairy-free edition right here. If you're like me and you're gluten-free, dairy-free. And then our daily planners, guys, featured in this video, 10% off, 400 pages, 365 days undated. So you can start now and you don't lose any dates. Thank you guys so much. On Wednesday's show, we're going to have Ma, and she's going to be talking to a woman who eats for $1 a day, 
we're going to be, she's not going to be on live. We're going to be, she sent us pictures in and we're going to be showing how she eats for $1 a day. So be watching for that show on Wednesday. Thank you so much, guys. Visit us at livingonadine.com.